Hello everyone, Steve here. Uh, purpose of this video today is to talk about the uh, Sports Illustrated baseball game and specifically to describe the spreadsheet that I have been working on to create individual player charts and cards uh, for this game. Uh, I'm specifically focused on the 1972 version of the game, which had uh, all the 1971 teams. And uh, you can see uh, kind of an illustration of the game behind me. I'm sure if you're watching this, you're, you're probably somewhat familiar with, with this game, but I'll talk about it briefly. So you have a pitcher chart with all the pitchers and, and their uh, specific characteristics, as you see, on the left side of the screen here. Um, as an aside, they also had individualized pitcher hitting charts as well. And then on the right, you see the batter charts. So the way this game works is you roll three special six-sided dice. And uh, once you read the results, um, you get a number between 10 and 39. They are not equally likely, by the way. The mid thirties uh, dice outcomes are the most likely and the mid twenties are probably the next most likely. And uh, so basically you roll the dice, you check the pitcher's chart first, which is an interesting feature. If, if it's a green result, generally speaking, then you go ahead and roll again and go over to the, to the batter chart. And then uh, and based on that second dice roll, you read, read the outcome of, of, of the roll. So another fe interesting feature is that they had left-hand, right-hand splits on the batter charts, uh, but not on, on the pitcher charts. So uh, just a little bit about the charts themselves. The yellow boxes generally mean uh, a walk. Uh, the, the blue boxes are strikeouts. Uh, the red boxes uh, are outs. And, and, and tell you um, the type of out that, that you have. If you move over to the batter's chart, the, the green boxes have individualized results in them for various types of singles, doubles, triples, and, and, and home runs. And the white box on the batter's charts are errors. So um, I've been working on this spreadsheet to, to make individual players' charts for probably close to a couple months off and on. And this is in the wake of having done a, a spreadsheet in, in mid to late summer for status pro cards. And anyways, uh, I'm a member of the Facebook uh, forum or group called SI Baseball. And um, I am uh, in the process of uh, learning more about the game. And as a, as a part of all that, um, I found an article, uh, basically on another online forum, uh, that was written many years ago by a guy named Randy Cox, where he explains how you can make your own charts. So, uh, I, I yielded to temptation and I, I took on the challenge and I said, I think I can make, make, uh, my own spreadsheet. Uh, I should have known better. It was a lot more work than I expected. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how to make the picture charts. I think the video uh, for the whole spreadsheet would just take too long, so I'm gonna split it up probably into, into three different spreadsheets. So with that introduction, uh, let's, let's go on to how the spreadsheet works. Okay. So maybe before I start on the spreadsheet, if you have comments, please leave them in the comments section underneath this video. I appreciate those the most. Likes and subscribes are fine too. If you want a copy of the spreadsheet, I'm gonna show you my email address here. I'm not gonna post it in the comments, but you can send me an email uh, to this uh, address and I'll, I'll gladly uh, share the current version of the spreadsheet with you. So um, the spreadsheet itself has a bunch of different tabs. Uh, I built a tab for uh, the dice rolls, uh, which you can use if you want. It's really not relevant to the chart making but every time you, you hit F9, it recalculates and, and gives you uh, uh, two dice rolls. Uh, the spreadsheet has a lot of notes in it about, about my thoughts that I gathered as I created this uh, spreadsheet. I've documented 
for, for a friend of mine, I've documented the things that are kind of require some manual input. And for the pictures charts, it's not very much uh, as, as the spreadsheet has evolved, but that, that is there. Um, I've also documented what I think the data inputs are uh, for both the player and in some cases uh, for, for the, the total of the league because that's relevant. And then there's a, a, a batter tab, a pitcher tab, and then there's some other, other uh, tabs that are supplemental and not really relevant. So what we have in front of, here, uh, in front of us here is the pitcher tab. I'm, I'm not sure how well you can read it, so I've, I've taken uh, a printout of the top of the tab. And so what you can see here is at the top, there's a data input section. And that section, uh, or any of the data input in the spreadsheet, comes from Baseball Reference, baseballreference.com. So many of you, I'm sure, are familiar with it. I know there are other data sources, but in this case, this is uh, Bob Gibson's pitcher page. And here's 1968, which is the year that I'm rating. Uh, he had a 1.12 ERA, um, amazingly had uh, 28 complete games, um, won 22 games and went to the World Series. So, um, you know, one, one other side comment is uh, he and some others pitched so well that year that, that they uh, lowered the pitcher's mound the following year to try to give the hitters a better chance. So uh, what I do is I actually kind of click click and drag over over the row the corresponding row that I'm that I'm interested in then I go to the spreadsheet and I and I right click and usually I can do paste special values that doesn't seem to be working here that can happen it's probably good that it did um, because the other thing you can do for any table that's in baseball reference is you can hover over share and export and come down to get as Excel workbook and it will save a generic workbook for you. And then from that workbook, it's pretty easy to copy and paste data into, into Excel. Uh, obviously use the spreadsheet. Some working knowledge of, of Excel is, is useful. Uh, one of the things that I, I do uh, when I import pitcher data is, you know, the innings pitched, if it's not an even number of innings, they, um, have 0.1 for a third of an inning and 0.2 for two thirds. I go ahead and change that manually to, to a decimal, but that's not absolutely required. I don't think it really changes much uh, when, when, when all is said and done. So there are, are several areas of data input. As you can see here, the, the top is Bob Gibson's individual pitching numbers for the year. Um, Next down is the, um, uh, the, the batting average against, that's an individual cell that you type in from a different, different page on Baseball Reference. And then there is the uh, league pitching data um, for the whole league. And then, uh, then there's also the league batting data over here on the right uh, so that you can compute some average statistics. And then just uh, just where my thumb is, you know, I recalculate some of this this data, the league batting average, the league hits and strikeouts and walks. I will also say that when I do any of these spreadsheets, I exclude intentional walks from the data. And so it's it's essentially the plate appearances with without intentional walks because that's a manager decision. So uh, with one exception, that's really all the data that you put in. Uh, then you get to the heart of the, of the spreadsheet. And, and so I'm going to try to switch this around here a little bit. But uh, a couple, couple of points here. Uh, if you are familiar with the picture chart, there is a column which is for dice roll 38, which... Um, is an X chart check, and that check is really for mostly for wild pitches and pass balls and and maybe some hits batsmen and so on. But once those are resolved, uh, you you come back and end up doing a, a new roll uh, on the pitcher chart. And so 
for the most part, when you roll that that 38, you, you really don't create an individual plate appearance. And so the reason why that's important is those six dice chances from, from dice roll 38, uh, you really need to ignore those. And so you really have 210 chances that you're working with um, in this spreadsheet for the pitchers. So the first thing you have to do is determine uh, whether the pitcher deserves any uh, chances on his, his chart for walks or hits batsmen or, or wild pitches or box or what have you. And, and in general, you may have some extra walks that you need to put on if, if, uh, if uh, he walks at a higher rate than, than the league average. Uh, in this case, for Bob Gibson, there's 10 chances that, that go to walks. Uh, there are no extra ones needed for hits, batsmen, wild pitches, and box. So out of the 210 that we started with, you can see on the right here that, um, that there's 200 chances left that we have to allocate. Next is a very important part of the spreadsheet. It's kind of a fork in the road. As, uh, as uh, Yogi Berra said, if you see a fork in the road, take it. And, and so what you have to do is you compare the pitcher's batting average against, in this case, 184 for Gibson, to the league batting average, which was 243 that year. And you can see Gibson was 59 points better than, than the league average, which is quite impressive. Um, so from that, you can see in, in red on the left, you calculate how many extra outs need to be on, on Gibson's chart. I'll bring up a random uh, picture chart here. You can see that this happens to be, uh, I think, uh, perhaps the Minnesota Twins. But you can see only one pitcher on the whole, whole team here has, has extra, extra fly outs or ground outs. Some of them have extra strikeouts, uh, but some of them don't have extra outs at all. In fact, um, some of them have extra hits. We'll get to that. Anyway, Gibson, he has 49 extra outs that need to go, go on, his, on his chart. And so how are we gonna allocate those? Well, the first thing you do is you go to the right and you say, okay, um, he should have 18 extra chances allocated to strikeouts because he did strike out batters at above the, the league average rate. And so you, you would put you know, enough blue boxes on the chart so that, so that there's 18 chances for a strikeout. And that leaves, in this case, 31 remaining outs that have to be split up. And you go over here and I've split them up between the ground out and the fly out chances. And the way I've done this is I've actually found another statistic called the um, ground out air out ratio. And lacking any better information, I, I type that in, I convert it to a percentage of outs that are ground outs, and then, and then I split the 31 uh, chances for outs, for, for ground outs or fly outs, I split them accordingly. So we have uh, 18 strikeouts, 18 strikeout chances, 14 ground out chances, 17 fly out chances. If uh, the pitcher had actually a, a, a batting average that's above the league average, uh, there would be nothing in the out, extra out section. Instead, there would be extra hits that you would allocate to the chart. And um, again, that's done automatically. Now there's a complicating factor here which is sometimes you'll have a pitcher that deserves uh, more strikeouts than, than the actual out allocations that you, you have uh, available uh, to make the chart. And so I'm gonna bring up a different example here. I, I did some charts for uh, Shohei Otani from the 2022 Angels. I did a a batting chart over here on the left, and then I did a, uh, a pitching chart uh, over here on the right. And um, I'm sorry, a pitching chart 
yeah, sorry, batting chart on the left versus left hand and right hand pitchers, and then a pitching chart as well. And then in, in the, so this column, these two columns have his pitching results. And then just for the heck of it, I, I put a consolidated batting uh, column here, but realistically, you would, you would use this other chart over here on the left. So um, we'll come back to that in a second. But here is the same section of the spreadsheet with, with his calculations. And you can see he was 39 points better than the league average in terms of um, batting average against. That generates 31 extra out chances. But you come over here and you see, well, ideally he would be deserving of 32 strikeouts. And so that, you know, there's too many, if you will. So in the Cox article, which I've, I've done here, there's actually an alternative calculation that he came up with that I've tried to replicate. And for some reason, the way, the way that his math works is you actually end up with very few blue strikeout squares and, and then the rest go to, to the red ground outs and fly outs. And, and so I, I don't necessarily feel that's right and I'm probably gonna change the spreadsheet. I'm probably gonna actually turn around and, and, and in this case and, and give him 31 blue strikeout chances. And then um, I think it's just more, more reflective of, of how he pitches. But nonetheless, if I only give him two strikeout chances, I still have 29 remaining outs left to go. Again, I've split those 14 and 15 over here. But uh, there's a unique, unique feature of the um, SI game that, that's, that allows you to kind of to get the strikeout statistics uh, in, in proper, um, proper order. And basically, it's, it's by putting a K symbol in the middle of a, of a green square. And what that means is um, it's, you still go over to the batter chart and roll, but if there's an out on the batter chart, the K become, or, or the out becomes a strikeout instead of a, another type of out. And so I built this myself, but I built logic in here, both, both up in this section and we'll come down, down below, where uh, I've attempted uh, to assign these green K rolls uh, when, when they're applicable. So, um, this is probably, this, this part with the green Ks and, and, and these allocations here was, was, was really the only part of the pitcher uh, chart or, or spreadsheet that was really hard to do. Uh, I'm not sure I've done a great job of explaining it, but if you, if you get the spreadsheet from me uh, and play around with, with different players, you'll, you'll see what I mean. I'm, I'm likely to change it, as I said, uh, so that in a situation like Otani here, uh, instead of a bunch of green K's on his chart, um, he'll have actually a lot more blue blue squares on his chart. So, uh, interestingly, none of this should affect the um, kind of the the general statistical accuracy of, of the chart, whichever way you do it. But that's just one one thing I'm going to do. So, if we go back to um, Gibson. Uh, We've really covered already the, the guts of, of how you come up with a picture chart. And so once you've done that, I've got a, a, a section here below uh, the calculations where uh, you actually then start building his chart. And I don't know if it's easier to see it this way or on the screen, but I'll, I'll show it to you here for now. So across the top, I show uh, all the potential outcomes on a picture chart. And then I show how many chances out of 216 uh, need to be allocated to each, each type of outcome. And then down below in the matrix uh, is where I manually assign outcomes uh, to each, each of those dice rolls uh, to come up with, with the chart. And you see on the left, you have all the dice rolls, 10 to 39. And then uh, over, over here, uh, next to walks, you have uh, the number of chances out of 216. 
And, and so, of course, um, we didn't talk about this, but roles 10 to 15 are al already allocated to a green D ch uh, outcome chance. And that's, that's a special situation where you uh, check for, for uh, the defense. And it's possible that there will be something called an automatic out. Uh, the blue sections are what you really fill in. And what you're trying to do as best you can is, is identify or allocate chances uh, so that they exactly come out uh, to the numbers that are across the top of the page. And I've got all kinds of check logic going on to make sure that there's integrity to chart. And at, at the very bottom, there's kind of an over or under allocation. You can see I was able to actually allocate uh, the exact number of, of uh, chances to each outcome that, that, that were needed. And, and so from there, then I will turn around and, and create a, an actual player chart and I'm going to go back up above here. There's really two formats. One, which I borrowed from somebody, is an is an Excel uh, formatted chart. Uh, as you can see here, I populated Bob Gibson's chart with with the uh, spreadsheet outcomes. So this is all all manual. Um, or you can put uh, you can put this in a um, a, a template, if you will, uh, where where you um, actually you know create uh, a player card. I'm going to try to show you, or I guess I already did show you with uh, Donnie. So um, so there you go. So there's what Bob Gibson's pitcher card might look like in in more card format. It's pretty much the same information, although. Um, I do have his, his batting outcomes on, on the, the chart as well. So uh, it's, that's really kind of it for the pitcher chart. Uh, it is, I guess maybe it's easier for me to say now that it's done that, that it's kind of, kind of easy. Um, but um, this, this section required a, a, a lot of thinking for sure. Um, one last thought here is uh, I've been working with some people from the baseball forum uh, on uh, SI baseball forum on, on um, Facebook and a couple of them are computer programmers. And, and so there's some work uh, planned to automate all this. Uh, and one, one person in, in particular proved that even this, this allocation process here could, could be automated. Uh, fairly easy, easily. Uh, I've done some pr computer programming myself in the past. Um, I'm sure I could eventually figure it out, but my skills are, are probably uh, decades stale, and so um, I'll probably leave that, that work to, to the other people. Thanks for listening. If you made it this far, again, any comments or emails are appreciated. Um, I will um, be posting... Uh, parts two and three here at some point, time allowing, uh, taking into account the holidays. And um, again, the spreadsheet's available if, uh, if you want it. I just noticed one last thing, sorry, sorry about this. Um, I feel like uh, Columbo uh, uh, back in the day with this TV show, but uh, there are some picture charts that actually have a past ball allocation. And I'm gonna show you, show you that here. Again, this is, um, I think, the Minnesota Twins chart. And if you can see uh, Wilbur Wood up here, he was a knuckleball pitcher. And you can see that actually square number 16 will create a passed ball. Uh, I do not have that, that logic built into this spreadsheet. In fact, I'm not sure, at least on baseball reference, you can even find the, the number of pass balls that a pitcher uh, was involved in. Um, but I did put it here just, just in case, but the spreadsheet doesn't do pass balls. Okay, with that, I am gonna sign off. Thanks uh, for listening. Take care, bye.